Well, thank you so much for coming today. My name is Patricia Mahoney, and I will be speaking about uh, Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice. I come from a theatrical background, having studied and worked as a dramaturg, providing research and analysis support for various performances. From this perspective, I've always seen The Merchant of Venice as a problem play. Its explicit comedy at the expense of its central Jewish character make it challenging to produce today based on its blatant support of anti-Semitism. The Merchant of Venice is a comedy that is no longer comedic and in many senses is very tragic. So it's a play that defies easy categorization. Part of this may be because tragedy and comedy have always been linked genres. While they're generally viewed as polar opposites, we can see countless examples of how these two genres interact and overlap. One key example is this phrase, tragedy plus time equals comedy. This is a popular phrase of many comedians today, and it was first said by actor and television personality Steve Allen in the February 1957 Cosmopolitan magazine. This phrase shows the commonly held belief that anything tragic given enough time can become the subject of comedy. And while this is true, I will argue today that the opposite is also true. That comedy is a temporal art and anything that is funny will only be funny for a limited amount of time due to shifting cultural norms. So comedy plus time equals tragedy. I will argue this point using Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice and the evolution of Shylock from a comedic blocking character to a modern tragic hero. We will accomplish this first by looking at The Merchant of Venice as a comedy, then examining how it lost its comedic elements over time, and then examining Merchant of Venice as a tragedy using Aristotle's poetics and a modern production. So The Merchant of Venice is traditionally considered to be one of Shakespeare's comedies. There are multiple couples who get married at the end and live happily ever after, and no one dies. And as Terry Eagleton explains in his book, Humor, Classically speaking, comedies are narratives in which things go entertainingly awry and are then patched up. So the evil Jewish moneylender Shylock is temporarily granted power in the middle of the play when the wealthy Antonio can't pay back his debt to Shylock. And in return, Shylock demands a pound of his flesh as payment. However, Shylock is ultimately defeated and everyone else can live happily ever after. As Eagleton states, Comedic ending is where the social order is restored in the end. Another key component of comedy is uh, that many scholars point to is the existence of blocking characters. Blocking characters disrupt the established social order and they must be defeated by the end of the play in order to reestablish the social, uh, the status quo. Blocking characters are defined there by their rigidity and uh, their repetition of an obsession just as Shylock is defined by his obsessive need for revenge. We can see Shylock's role as a blocking character in the setup of the plot. In The Merchant of Venice, the social order is established at the beginning of the play, showing Shylock as a very low status character, one who is rejected by society because of his religion. And Antonio, on the other hand, is a wealthy merchant beloved by his community. When Antonio loses his investments and cannot pay back his loan to Shylock, the social order is overturned and Shylock's obsessive blocking nature is revealed as he demands a pound of Antonio's flesh for payment. The happiness of all of the other characters are dependent on defeating Shylock. Eventually they do as Portia, one of the lovers, outsmarts Shylock and he is forced to convert to Christianity in order to restore a social order based on Christian values. Everyone else but the blocking character Shylock, Shylock gets a happy ending. As we can see through the character of Shylock, and as Michael Shapiro addresses, blocking characters are rejected by the social order or absorbed into it, as Shylock is when he's forced to convert in order to conform to a society based on Christianity. To me, this understanding of comedy strongly relates to Henry Bergson's book Laughter, where Bergson addresses the social purpose of comedy. He states that laughter implies a group that the person that we're laughing at is not a part of, we laugh at people who are rigid and inhuman, such as a blocking character like Shylock. And Bergson argues that laughter is intended to nudge those outside of society's norms back into compliance. 
So when we laugh at Shylock, we are saying that he must be corrected for straying too far outside of societal norms. All of this points to the fact that comedy can be used as a corrective force in society in order to reinforce societal norms. Comedy essentially presents transgressions against the, uh, the societal norms that must be fixed by the end of the play, thereby proving that these transgressions cannot exist in a fully functioning society. This shows that comedies will always uphold the societal norms that existed during the creation of that comedy. And we could, can clearly see in Shakespeare's original text that anti-Semitism was a cultural norm that Shakespeare's comedy reinforced. We know that anti-Semitism was present and arguably rampant in Shakespeare's England. There were very few Jewish people in England at the time because they had been expelled in 1290. Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice can also be seen as a direct reaction to the arrest and execution of Queen Elizabeth's Portuguese doctor of Jewish descent in 1594. Propaganda and stereotypes against Jewish people were rampant. One example was a sermon in 1624 given by John Dunn, the Dean of St. Paul's Cathedral, where he perpetuated the lie that Jewish people murder Christians in order to drink their blood and achieve salvation. This sermon sparked several attacks against Jewish communities. And this anti-Semitism can clearly be seen within Shakespeare's text, which portrays a lot of stereotypes against Jewish people, attributing Judaism with greed and excessive violence, as well as the common portrayal of Jewish women as hypersexualized and desperate to convert to Christianity, which we can see in the role of Shylock's daughter, Jessica, who runs away from her father in order to convert to Christianity and marry a Christian man. Even the full title of this play, when it was first published in the first quarter, focuses on Shylock as inherently evil due to his religion. The original title was The Merchant of Venice, the extreme cruelties of Shylock, the Jew towards the said merchant, in cutting a just pound of his flesh, and the obtaining of Portia by the choice of three chests. But if we're arguing that comedy is a corrective force in society, we also have to realize that societal norms change. So what was once funny because it was serving a societal purpose of corrective laughter just isn't funny anymore when the jokes no longer apply because the societal norms have changed. So we can't consider Merchant of Venice a comedy in 2021 because our cultural and societal norms have shifted. While anti-Semitism is still undeniably prevalent in our world, it's no longer justified or enforced by as many governments or in as many countries. With this in mind, it's hard for many of us to ignore the blatant anti-Semitism within Merchant of Venice and define this play as comedic. As Aviva Dodge points out in her article, A Jewish Reading of the Merchant of Venice, when we read Merchant of Venice in the light of Nazi caricatures of Jews as animals or Hitler's description of Untermenschen, this play takes on a sinister resonance and we can't ignore that when we see a modern production. We no longer have a key component of that's necessary for comedy, which Henry Bergson argues is indifference. Because uh, in modern days, we do not consider Shylock to be a rigid and inhuman character because of his religion. We are no longer indifferent to him. We no longer have, as Bergson says, the anesthesia to the heart that is necessary to laugh at someone. And when a modern audience hears Shylock speak of the way that Antonio treats him, calling him a cutthroat dog and spitting on him, the audience no longer thinks of Antonio as the hero of the story, but rather sympathizes with Shylock. We recognize that the treatment Shylock has received due to his religion is wrong because many places where this play is produced no longer uphold a society singularly based on Christian beliefs. But is this enough to argue that Merchant of Venice is a tragedy? I will argue yes, because it no longer fits within our definition of a comedy based on our shifting cultural perspective. Instead, it does more aptly fit into the category of tragedy if we consider Aristotle's poetics. Aristotle wrote what many consider still to be a foundational text on the understanding of tragedy as a genre. While not all of his points are applicable to theater today as the art form continues to evolve, he does make a compelling argument about the necessity of evoking fear. Aristotle writes that tragedy does not show the downfall of an utter villain. A plot of this kind would doubtless satisfy the moral sense, 
but it would neither inspire pity nor fear. For pity is aroused by unmerited misfortune, fear by a misfortune of a man just like ourselves. And we can see clearly that Shylock is a man just like us in his moving speech, where he says, I am a Jew. Hath not a Jew eyes? Hath not a Jew hands, organs, dimension, dimensions, senses, affections, passions? If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? He proves to the audience that he is a man like us. And we, as empathetic humans, inherently fear for the mistreatment of people who are like us. So we can see that Shylock is no longer a blocking character, but a tragic hero, because we are no longer indifferent to him. We hear his pleas that he is human, and we fear that we could fall into the same undeserved misfortune as the prejudice that Shylock faces. He becomes a tragic hero, who is indeed flawed, but relatable, as opposed to robotic and comedic. Aristotle further defines a tragic hero as a character between two extremes, that of a man who is not imminently good and just, and yet whose misfortune is brought about not by vice or depravity, but by some error or frailty. Viewed in this light, Shylock is not obsessively seeking blood. He is rather a father whose daughter has left him, and he is desperately seeking revenge, as would many people. Shylock is flawed, undoubtedly, but it's a flaw that we as a modern audience can sympathize with, even if it's not something we would enact ourselves. And when modern productions produce The Merchant of Venice today, they tend to emphasize Shylock as a tragic hero. Partially, this is due uh, to, in order to detract from the anti-Semitism that was in the original production. I'll take a look at one production in particular, The Globe's 2015 production of The Merchant of Venice, directed by Jonathan Munby. This production exemplifies changes that have become relatively standard in modern productions in order to enhance the tragic qualities of the show and detract from the comedic qualities. One key component of that was the prevalence with which violence against Jewish people was shown on stage in Munby's production. This production opens with a masquerade, with people partying and dancing and singing. However, when two Jewish men cross the stage, they are viciously beat up, thrown on the ground, and left there. Later on, this violence is shown against Shylock specifically. He is spit on multiple times in the play. And here pictured is a particularly disturbing moment where Antonio in the black hat is asking Shylock in the red hat for a loan. Shylock says something that displeases him, at which point Antonio begins to choke Shylock and then grabs his face in order to finish his speech. Viewed in this light, when the other characters espouse Antonio's virtues, his kindness and generosity, these words take on a relatively ironic twist. However, the most moving scene to highlight the evolution of this comedy into a tragedy is Munby's rejection of a happy ending. Shylock's trial is the last time that in Shakespeare's original text we see Shylock, and this is at, in the fourth act. And the fifth act represents a reconvening of the couples who resolve their issues and live happily ever after, Sherlock essentially being forgotten. But in Munby's production, he stages an additional scene where after the final lines of the show, Jessica, pictured in the front, is, reads a letter about her father's forced conversion to Christianity, at which point she begins to openly weep on stage at the horror. Then Shylock's baptism is displayed on stage, leaving the audience uncomfortable and saddened for this man who's losing a key component of his identity. What was originally portrayed as a victory and a restoration of the way that the world should work, instead for a modern audience, we are left with horror and sadness at the mistreatment of Shylock and the loss of his identity. The final image of the play is after the baptism has taken place and Jessica still remains crying on stage, utterly destroying any comedic intention of social order being restored, as clearly, for our tragic hero, his social order remains upturned. Therefore, if we revisit the goal of this presentation, we can see that Shylock has evolved throughout time from his original role as a comedic blocking character to a tragic hero as defined by Aristotle and as reinforced by modern productions. 
demonstrating just one example of how all comedies with enough time will become tragic due to comedy's dependence on laughing at cultural eccentricities, which will later become accepted by society, essentially showing that comedy plus time equals tragedy. Thank you so much for listening. Um, these are my works cited.